Hello everyone and welcome to how to make a completely custom rocket in Kerbal Space Program. This is a series in which I'm going to describe how I make a completely new rocket like this Vector R in Kerbal Space Program. We will go through how to take advantage of the features of various mods like procedural parts, procedural fairings, and real fuels, realism overhaul, and also eventually how to model your own parts in Blender and how to import those into Kerbal Space Program. So we're going to do the whole nine yards. Uh, apologies for the fact that the VAB looks a little bit darker than usual. That's because my post-processing is on in this install. But let's take apart this uh, Vector R. I'm making this series of videos because people asked for the rocket. And uh, the problem is that you can't just take the craft file and nor is it easy exactly to just take uh, particular parts and I'll describe why. I'll explain uh, how this is all done. And uh, well the first thing is these are not AJ-10 engines. I'm using an, a model of an AJ-10 engine but I've created a configuration on it for the particular engine that the Vector R uses because the AJ-10s happen to fit reasonably well. I considered using a Vanguard engine, but uh, we are using the AJ-10s because uh, the Vanguard engines had a little bit sticking out. You can sort of see there's a little bit of the AJ-10 sticking out right there, but the Vanguard was worse, though its nozzle was a little bit better. Then we've got a bunch of procedural parts. There's a procedural tank here, a procedural tank here, and then this is also a procedural tank with a custom texture. So in this video, I'm going to tell you specifically how to make a custom texture for your procedural parts so that once you have the procedural parts mod, you can just switch to whatever texture you want and create a new texture just for yourself. For instance, I've got also in here somewhere the blue origin texture, like so. And uh, yeah, so that is an option. You can see that's a long one. And but this is the one that we want to use here. So that's what this video is mainly going to be about. But let's also uh, take a look at one other thing that I'll do in the next video, which is this procedural fairing. This is a procedural fairing and the Vector R's fairing is blue for reasons I'm not entirely sure. But uh, next video we'll talk about how to make a custom texture for your procedural fairing. But that's more complicated than the procedural part. So. The first thing we need to do is find a new texture that we want and uh, we'll just grab it from a website. Um, let's go with the NASA worm logo. I, I always wanted to put uh, that on a rocket, on the side of a rocket, but uh, haven't had the occasion to. So here we've got various iterations of the NASA worm logo. This is from Wikimedia Commons. So I'm just going to uh, take this into Photoshop. You can use whatever image editing program you want. So now we have the worm logo, but we'll need to make it vertical, I guess. That's a little bit of a problem with this logo. Hmm. Eh, we'll just uh, tilt it. So for the Vector R, I had three different textures. I had this texture, which is the upper stage. And then I had these two textures, depending on the size of the tank. Uh, it turned out that this was the correct size. So basically the aspect ratio is, this one is the same width as its length. This one is two times the length as its width. And this one is four times the length as its width. So we're going to make a NASA one that's matching this aspect ratio. So first of all, let me just, uh, well, uh, I can just delete this texture. And what you may notice uh, is that I've overlaid on top of the main texture a texture that's just little scratches. You could probably find something like this on the web somewhere. That, that'll make it look a little bit more realistic. Uh, GIMP also has layers, so if you want to uh, do this whole layering thing, uh, you might want to use that. That's a free, ver a free program that's basically the equivalent to Photoshop. So, uh, once we have this, we have the NASA Worm logo. Oops, we want to copy the one that it's actually in. Okay, and then we will transform this by rotating it by 90 degrees. I'm just going to make a texture like that. And again, it's behind the scratches, which is what we want. 
Uh, I think we can make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so this is a very simple texture. Uh, next question is, what format do we save it in? So, save as, and I'm going to say that we want a DDS file. And we need to put that into the right folder. Uh, I'll save this as NASA worm first with the layers. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to plop it directly into my game data folder. Uh, into a folder of my creation that says textures. So here I have a folder called TR textures for Tyler Ray's textures. And I'm going to, so you can create your own folder for your own textures. The mod that this all requires is procedural parts. So you need that. And you also need module manager. Those are the only two mods you need. So you can still do this in stock. Uh, you don't need realism overhaul or anything for now. So you can still make your custom rockets in stock with uh, custom tanks, but you need procedural parts and module manager, but you don't need to put the texture into the procedural parts folder. There are other texture packs I have here like main sailor. So but anyway, make your own folder. And in here, you need to save it as a DDS. Um, if you don't have a plugin for Photoshop or something that can save it as a DDS, paint.net can convert anything to a DDS file. And I think paint.net is free as well. Now, uh, here's the thing. Um, you'll notice that the textures I already have in here are backwards. Um, so we actually need to save this backwards. I forgot about that. Um, well, I mean, I guess it could be just end up... Well, let, let's save it like this and see which direction it ends up oriented. And again, uh, this is sort of the easy way to get textures onto a tank. There are harder ways and uh, more sophisticated ways that we can talk about, like modeling them in text uh, in Blender, for instance. But uh, here I also have a generic textures if I need a particular color. You can see I just saved a little square in various colors just so that I have those colors available. So you might want to do that too. Uh, all right, NASA Worm, we'll save it like this and see how it actually looks on on the tank. But first we need to add a configuration, and I'll show you what that looks like. Oh, and uh, it brought the DDS format thing here. This is the, how you save a DDS format and you want to generate MIP maps. It's DXT3 and uh, just make sure that your settings are reasonable. So next we have to tell the program to load that texture. And if you don't already have your own um, configuration file, what you want to do is uh, go to procedural parts this is its texture configuration. And that looks like this. And you can see what it does is it has the name of the texture, says sides, open curly brackets, and then the name of the file name of the texture. So it's telling you it's in uh, game data is assumed. And then you, the procedural parts folder, parts inside of that, that's the texture file, and this is a bump, bump map. And uh, U scale or V scale, that uh, determines how often it's repeated. So, uh, best way to do that is just to bring it in and experiment. So we have various textures here, and basically what U scale two will do is it'll make sure that we have the same texture front and back. You'll notice I only put the NASA worm logo once, but we really do want it once on one side and once on the other side, right? So we'll want it to wrap twice. And so copying the use scale two is basically what we want. Otherwise we want it to auto scale with the tank. So we'll want auto scale to be true. And so you'll just copy one of these blocks, change that name uh, to whatever name you want to have it display in game and change this name. Also change the folder uh, since you've got it in a different folder. Don't change the end unless you've created a new texture for the end part of the tank, so the top and the bottom. Otherwise, just use the default one. So let's take a look at uh, my custom configuration in my folder. So once I've got my folder here, we've got all these textures. I add JPEGs as well. If you want to save it as JPEG, that's fine. Uh, but 
it's all in the thing called stretchy tank textures so make sure you have that and then the textures are inside that se segment i don't know what to call it and so edb textures new glen textures blue origin texture vector texture i'm just gonna copy the last one here and it's exactly the same uh, except I've got a shininess and specular as what we saw before in the procedural parts folder. And we're going to call this NASA, whoop, 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 NASA worm. And I called it NASA worm. Okay, and we're keeping everything else the same. Okay, and having reloaded the game here, let's check. Um, should be under A. It all always sorts them alphabetically, sort of. Well, that's sort of backwards, isn't it? Well, I was afraid of that. So we're gonna have to flip it horizontally. That's pretty clear. I I do. I think I'll have the N at the bottom and the V at the top. So flipping it horizontally is all we need to do. In pretty much any editing program you pick, there probably is an option to simply uh, flip horizontal. So that is what I'm going to do there. And if we wanted the V on the bottom, I suppose we would flip vertical as well. Uh, so it's opposite, completely opposite from the way it looks in Photoshop when you save as a DDS. I don't think that's true if you save it as a JPEG for some reason. But if you are saving it as a DDS, flip horizontal, flip vertical. So, but I, yeah, I, I decided that I wanted the V on the top. So I'm not too sure how NASA would have it. But um, that's the way I want it. So I'm going to save as DDS again, uh, back into the same folder. But I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. There we go. All right, well, that's, that's good for starters. Now, you saw I had three different sizes uh, for the vector rocket. And so this texture will eventually get stretched if you try and use it on too long a tank. Uh, anything between, like... Oh, right around here-ish. That looks fine. And so about five times the diameter. So if the texture is four times the length than its width, it seems to work for about five times the length versus diameter to... That's still okay. Probably about there is the limit, uh, seven times the length to diameter. After that, you're going to just have to make one that uh, is taller in Photoshop or whatever image editing program you use. And so that's the caveat. Uh, before I hand you a texture like the vector texture, of course, I wanted to make sure you knew that there are limitations to all this. You're going to have to make it the right size for the tank you're using. So that's, that's a complication and an annoyance. But otherwise, you can now make custom textures to suit your rocket program. Uh, have your own logo. Uh, go get some clip art and make your own logo. Have a dragon rocket or some anime character or whatever. Uh, and uh, next time, we'll talk about how to make custom procedural fairings. And then we'll cover uh, custom engine configurations. Um, and then we'll move on eventually. Uh, I'll think about what else I need to cover before we get to actually modeling something in Blender and bringing it into Kerbal Space Program using Unity. So that's uh, the ultimate topic. If you really want to make it look exactly right, that's one way to go. Oh, uh, while I'm at it, uh, if you have a tank and you want to, because I mean, procedural tanks are just straight cylinders. If you want to add some uh, greebling, for instance, uh, procedural tanks themselves give you some opportunity to, to do that. Uh, one common one that I do that uh, doesn't uh, take too much effort is uh, make a pipe. Uh, so you can make a really long tank that's, oh, but not that thin, uh, really thin and, no, no, thinner. You could do that and and then it's empty and really it's very light it's only one kilogram so it's not gonna cause the rocket to go off to one side or anything even if you have just one and you could sort of have a LOX uh, pipe or something like that because there's there's two tanks and there's one on top of another 
So you could sort of have that on the side. Also, uh, they do have, uh, and I think it comes with procedural tanks, the inner stage texture. And so one solution that you could have, if it turns out that you have the wrong size texture, let's say you uh, really needed a 12 meter tank, but your texture only fit six meters. Well, one solution is to just put the texture on one part and uh, put a more generic texture on the next part and have an interstage. So you have black texture there, right size, and use the dark interstage, and then uh, you're okay again. But yep, yeah, that, so that's something else you could do. You could put, and of course, down here, I use procedural tanks to create the little fairings for these engines because the Vector Rocket has these. And so we have pants. And that's done with a smooth cone, uh, round one curve, and a zero at the top and a little bit at the bottom. Balloon tank, so it has the minimum amount of mass. Uh, and yeah, so you can uh, sort of greeble it like that and have a uh, more custom shape. But we can talk about other possibilities as we go along. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.